Hey guys, that's right. Today is the day we're going to start learning how to hit the driver. We're going to talk about the fundamentals to be able to hit solid drives every single time. My name is Joaquin Arboso and this is Swing Solutions. Hi guys, how frustrating is it when you take a driver lesson and it's just things are still not working out? You spend that money on, a, on an hour lesson or a 30 minute lesson on how to hit a driver. You work on it and it's still you go to the golf course and you're still experiencing the same issues. Well, hopefully after today's video, you'll have a better understanding of the basic fundamentals of how we set up, how we swing the club, and the things that we're looking for to be able to hit solid drives every single time. So first let's talk about the basics. How we set up to the ball, where the ball position should be, just the simple things that you hear from all golf instructors every time you take a lesson or the research that you've done on YouTube. When we're setting up to the ball, we're want, we want to make sure that the ball position is in the correct spot. Because this club is roughly 45 inches in length, it takes more time for the golf club to come around and square itself up at impact. So one thing we want to make sure of is that our ball position is correct when we're hitting this shot. When we're setting up the ball position, we want to make sure that the golf ball is set on the inside of your left foot, okay? Number two is the width of our stance. A lot of you, when you swing your driver, you lose your balance or you just don't feel comfortable over the ball and it feels like you're almost going to be falling over when you hit the shot because it's such a big shot and such a powerful shot. Make sure you have a nice wide stance, roughly roughly just outside shoulder width apart. Nice big base to allow you to swing aggressively without feeling like you're gonna be losing your balance. And then number three is make sure that the hand position is correct. When you look down at the golf ball, the ball is gonna to be to the left of us and it's gonna feel a little awkward at first, especially for those of you who are just learning how to hit a driver. When we set that club down and the ball positions inside the left foot, the final thing is making sure that the hands are just a little left of center of our body. You know, a lot of times I see a lot of students bring the hands forward, causing the club to de-loft itself and then you struggle getting the ball up in the air. Or it also helps promote the hands coming into the ball first rather than the, the club head. And then we start missing shots off to the right. So just the three basic setup techniques is making sure that the ball position's in the correct spot inside your left foot. You take a nice wide stance and you make sure that the hands don't go forward, but they're just slightly left of the center of your chest. And now we're ready to hit a drive with a little bit more confidence and a little bit more accuracy into the golf ball. So once we talk about the basics on how to set up with the ball position, wide stance and hands, we now have to make sure that we're lining ourselves up correctly for this shot. 70% of right-handed golfers create a fade and a dreaded slice on the golf course with a driver. And what ends up happening is we start manipulating how we aim on the golf course. We start setting up where we're aiming 20, 30, sometimes even 40 yards left of target just to get the golf ball to travel into the fairway. Now, when we start opening up the stance like this, we're now messing with the lines to be able to hit a straight shot. So we end up coming across the golf ball and cutting across the golf ball where the hands are getting led towards the left hip at a very aggressive pace, creating very big slices in our shots. We wanna make sure that we set up a little bit more carefully and not try to manipulate, but try to correct. When we're setting up and that golf ball is setting up towards your target, we want to make sure that our feet are parallel to the target line. The target line is the line that the ball is going to be traveling on. So the way I do this is by using two alignment rods to help me. The outer one outside the golf ball is my target line. It's where the ball is going to be traveling. And then I set up an inside rod to help me with my feet to make sure that I'm setting up parallel to the target line. Now, when I'm in this position here, this is going to allow me now not to cut across the ball, but it's going to allow me to swing through the golf ball and at my target, creating more consistency in how I ball strike and how the flight of the ball is looking and being created. One thing that we're looking for when we hit a driver is a ball that carries. It gets nice launch off the face and then we get pretty greedy with it. When the ball hits the ground or the fairway, we want the ball to release out with some topspin so we can get maximum yardage on our drives. 
when we're cutting across the ball and the ball starts traveling to the right, you're actually putting the incorrect spin on the ball and the ball's never really releasing correctly. So one thing that you can do to be able to create an ascending blow rather than a descending blow is in your shoulders. Once we get into that setup and we place everything where it needs to be, normally with an iron, your shoulders are pretty square and depending on your lie, but if we're on a flat lie, our shoulders are pretty square. But when we hit a driver, we're gonna tilt that right shoulder down slightly. And the way I like to do that, and know how much I should do, is I take the club and I put it at the center of my chest, and then I'll go ahead and tilt my shoulders to the right until the golf club gets pretty close to my left foot. Okay, that's the tilt that we're gonna want and we want to maintain throughout the swing to be able to have an ascending blow into the golf ball, hitting up on the golf ball, not only creating trajectory, but also creating rollout top spin when it hits the fairway. One way that you can work on an ascending blow on the driving range is by using an object and placing it in front of your golf ball about two feet. I like to use my driver head cover for this, just for the simple fact that when we're working on drills, things don't quite always work out the way we want and the golf ball will hit the object or definitely we don't want the club head to hit the object. So you wanna use something soft like a head cover for this drill. I place it two feet in front of the golf ball and what this is gonna do, it's gonna allow me to have a visual of that club head having to travel over my head cover to be able to go through and create a shot that's more ascending than descending. Once I get into my setup position, you know, take the club back and through a couple times and really feel that club traveling over the club head cover. And if you're not comfortable with this, do it at half speed until you start building your confidence and then you'll be able to do it every time at full swing speed. And finally, we wanna create club head speed through impact. So now that we got the setup down, we're lining ourselves up correctly. We're creating an ascending blow rather than a descending blow. We now wanna create club head speed with the club head. Now, understand one thing, for a club head to travel faster, another part of the club has to travel slower. So if the club head is traveling faster through impact, the grip is actually traveling slower and our body's traveling slower. But amateur golfers actually do it in reverse. They take the club back and create club head speed by using a lot of their body lunging forward or using too much of their lower body creating a sway. And the club's actually just being delayed and causing that club to come through the ball an op with an open club base and ultimately cutting across the golf ball, which remember, like I said, 70% of golfers are struggling with. You know, one way that you can work on this is just by flipping the club over, gripping your right hand just underneath the club head. So now the grip is closer to the golf ball and you wanna quiet the body down, but feel more activity with the arms, creating a whooshing sound. And as you hear that whooshing sound, Try to increase the sound by quieting the body, but being a little bit more active with that right forearm and right hand. And that's gonna allow you to start teaching yourself how to swing the club faster with the body being a little bit more quiet. Guys, thank you so much for spending your time with me and learning how to hit a driver today. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the subscribe button and definitely like the video just so more people are able to view it. Uh, remember, this is video that I'm shooting on my days off at work and I would love the support from everyone. If you like this video, check out these other ones up here. This one right here and the one right up top. Check those out, see if you like it and I'll see you guys next time.